All right, fans of music, welcome. Harmless me here talking again, real music, real issues, doing it in real time for a few real people who remain uh, those people just like you right there and maybe like me. Um, so John Bon Jovi's got the thing. Uh, he tested positive for the thing yesterday. Uh, and you know what? It, it just to me, it seems as though all of the people who have advocated most for doing this seem to be getting it. I don't know if it's just because they see, because if the other people who didn't do it got it, right? First of all, that would be headline news. They'd be endangering the entire planet, right? All the people around them, even though the recent events with Kiss and their guitar tech would indicate that somebody who was fully thinged passed this over to somebody who wasn't thinged, right? And they ended up not, you know, making it. Now, that's still really bad because even though people want it to be 100% compliance, and then if it was 100% compliance, then there would be no stories about those evil people who are causing the people who did the thing to get sick, even though they did the thing. I've been hearing that too. Well, you know, was it Noam Chomsky said something like the people are endangering the people who took the thing, which is supposed to protect them from the thing, but yet they're endangered by the people who didn't do the thing. I'm just, it's, so it's madness. It's, again, my goalpost analogy, I'm probably going to just ditch it for now because it doesn't really matter anymore. We're not talking about goalposts. We're talking about a reality bias. That's what I've, I've termed this. It might not be my term, but I've been using it lately. There seems to be a reality bias. Like you have your own reality that you live in and you pay attention to these narratives 24 hours a day. And yeah, they're starting, if you, if you watch the news, they're starting to like not talk about certain things as much anymore. Like, first of all, there are reactions to the thing that they won't talk about. But I've noticed in a few select markets where it is so blatant, so obvious that you did this thing and then this thing happened to you, that there has to be a connection. This isn't just a coincidence every time, every single time. Well, you know, the doctor took a look and said, oh, this has nothing to do with the fact that they did the thing every single time. Doctor know-it-all every single time. And how do you know? What tests did you do? And you know, the other thing they'll do is somebody has a reaction, right? So they'll do a battery of tests and they'll say, well, the test came back inconclusive. What? So <laughs> we've, we've got the technology apparently to solve something that they used to say you know, it would be awesome if we could fix this, but we're just going to have to live with this and try to mitigate it. That's what you should be doing. Even this, even this, instead of instilling the fear and the panic, rather than doing that, saying, you know what, we can beat this. Um, that spirit, like the spirit that got us to the moon in 1969, 1969, we went to the moon and returned safely. Of course, some people will say we didn't. <laughs> and that's fine at this point. You can question everything. But I mean, I think it would have been kind of impossible to recreate that the way it was created uh, with the technology that we had at the time to make it look authentic. But I digress. I don't want to get into an argument about the moon landing when we started talking about John Bon Jovi. Now, John Bon Jovi, of course, is one of those advocates, um, and he pretty much shills for the state. He shills for the establishment, which is weird. You know, I met Bon Jovi, John Bon Jovi, like 30 years ago, 31, 30, I forget how many years ago. It's been a long time since I rock and rolled. No, it's been a long time since I met 
John Bon Jovi at a concert. In fact, it was a farewell present from uh, a guy by the name of Don from Polygram Records who said, well, we're going to send you off and you're going to get to go see John Bon Jovi, hang out backstage, uh, eat some great food and be in the fifth row. And I said, yeah, sounds good to me. I wasn't actually the biggest John Bon Jovi fan. Uh, we had played the crap out of the New Jersey album, which I believe was uh, out at the moment. And, um, you know, I just thought, hey, this guy is for the ladies. Uh, at the time, I brought my lady with me, and uh, she was pretty much starstruck the whole time and pretty much wanted to ditch me and just hang out with John, which I totally understand. Um, <laughs> but, you know, Fast forward 30 years later, and this guy is like a billboard for the current United States uh, dementia patient who I, I don't understand why people from all walks of life don't feel there needs to be an intervention at some point. Imagine being his wife and putting on this charade, right? Now I'm getting way off track here, but imagine the guilt, the embarrassment, like, okay, we've got to keep him going. We've got to prop him up every single day. And this has nothing to do with politics. This is just like trying to pull this thing together so it looks not so embarrassing. But you've got like the other night you had Anderson Cooper feeding the guy, you know, he couldn't, he couldn't think of any other ports like the Long Beach port in California. And uh, Anderson Cooper gave him the answer. Yeah. Yeah. We should have that guy as the president right now. Okay. The world is um, getting scarier by the moment. And you, again, put this guy in charge and you need someone who can reassure the people in this country first and foremost, and then, you know, show a little strength and leadership. So the rest of the world doesn't think you're a joke. Now, what do I make of this John Bon Jovi thing? Well, there's not much to say. It's the old, he got it, but so what? He's canceling shows, which doesn't make sense. Because, hey, if you get this and you did the thing, you'll be fine, right? That's what we're told all the time. You'll be fine. Why cancel shows? Why? Why even bother? Well, he still might test positive. And if he tests positive, then he doesn't want to risk and by the way, there is a concern about this now after the KISS situation. But if everybody is required to do the thing, then what's the worst thing that can happen to somebody, right? Because we know that nobody is, nobody is succumbing to this if they've done the thing, right? We, there are zero people out there, right? Even though if you look at stats from the UK, you look at stats from Israel, I think last month, even the state of Illinois, see, you, this stuff isn't reported anywhere. You have to kind of, and then if you post it anywhere, they're going to tell you it's mis or disinformation and uh, they'll put little bars in front of your face and lock you into a jail of some kind of virtual jail, or maybe they'll come and just take you away. That might be the next step. But I just find this confusing at best because you told me I could have my life back. You told me I could go to concerts, but you're still canceling concerts. Well, you have to, right? Based on the fear and the panic. And that leads one to believe that no matter what you do, life will never be normal now because we've crossed this line and we've made everybody so fearful and so filled with kind of this sense of dread and they're always kind of looking over their shoulder at what's going to hurt them next now. You know, and I've heard things like, oh, well, the garden variety version of this may be worse than the other version that showed up in 2019. And you're thinking to yourself, so what do I do about that? You know, and then, of course, the colder months are beginning to, you know, take hold and the northern tier of states is probably going to see a huge uptick because because science people okay because of science real science not fake science so then you're going to have panic 
that sets in. We've had a lull in some places where I live. It's one of the lowest per capita. And um, what's interesting is probably theoretically, our state is the most free, theoretically, but it depends on what county you live in because you've got dictators and uh, zealots or whatever you want to call them who just defy everything that comes down from either the governor or somebody in between. So it doesn't really matter. You have to live in a place where um, the local authorities believe in freedom and bodily autonomy and all that good stuff. Uh, or uh, the corporation that runs everything near where you live, they're not more in charge than the people who were actually elected to run the thing. You know, like Walmart is more in charge of your life than your local sheriff. This is the power structure that's happening. All this, folks, from a John Bon Jovi got the thing article. And the only thing you can say about it is it, it kind of figures. It's like everybody who advocates hard for this seems to get it. And then they have to kind of, it's like threading a needle. They have to kind of say, oh, well, at least I'm okay. You know, the first thing they come out with is not this didn't work. Not that we thought we would never have to cancel concerts ever again because they told us we could have our life back. Nope, they didn't, they didn't say that. They said, oh, he's doing fine. His symptoms are mild. He's going to be great. It'll be fine, but we're still going to cancel the show. Why cancel the show? You mean he could still give this to someone else? Is that what you're saying? So you get it, you can pass it. And <laughs> according to certain places in the world, Things can end really badly, even after you've done it. So how is this doing any good? How is it doing any good? It's not. That's what I get out of all this. And anybody who doesn't see that is being paid by somebody to um, do a different narrative, to just go along with it and say, okay, it's all you people who didn't do it. You're the problem. Hey, this isn't about those people. It keeps happening to people who did it and they're high profile, they're in the news. And then the apologists come out and pretend that, yeah, it's not a big deal. It's fine. Good thing they did what they did because otherwise they'd be six feet under. Okay. All right. Have it your way. That's good. Are they going to get it again and again and again? I mean, this can't be all that effective if and, and we've heard this, by the way, that the efficacy drops and it drops quickly if it was to begin with. I question all of this and I'd like to see some real science, not some pseudo media generated science or make believe science. So not much else he could say on this. Um, I wish him well. Yeah, he was great at the concert. He was very talkative. Of course, he was much younger, as was I. And I think our priorities were different. I think our lives were different. He was a superstar. I was, you know, having a good time as the music director of a radio station and about to leave to go work at another radio station. And, you know, you, none of this, we, nobody could have imagined what would happen 30 years later. But here we are. And some of us, would prefer to go back to 1990 to hang out. I think it was John Bon Jovi and Cinderella. Cinderella opening for John Bon Jovi. And I missed part of Cinderella because I was blabbing so much with those guys. And, um, you know, those moments in your life, uh, you don't realize it as they're happening, but uh, you can't get those things back. So uh, even now, if you have an opportunity to find a little bit of joy and do something that makes you happy, like going to see a concert without having to wear a medical device or, or a test or um, any other thing that they want to do to you. If you could go ahead and find that, do it, because who knows what's going to happen down the road. I'm hoping things get better, but um, I'm not banking on that. I'm really not. And that's what makes doing these videos a little depressing at times. But we have to keep going and we just take one day at a time.